Hello, and welcome to The First Step. My name is Gary Labe, and today uh, I would like to talk with you guys a little bit about creating a rough sketch or an underpainting for your illustrations. Uh, what you see flashing before you is an illustration that I'm presently working on, uh, and I'm hoping to break this down into uh, several tutorials uh, and cover a wide range of stuff in a little bit more detail than I can in just a single video. So let's not wait around any longer. Let's get started working on your rough sketch. The one thing that I failed to mention at the outset of this video is that uh, this illustration is going to be used for several different things, not specifically for tutorials. Uh, it'll also be used as an illustration for a book that I'm currently working on called Rune and the White Raven, uh, as well as being featured um, as at the Sketchpad Gallery in San Francisco starting March 11th um, at the 100 100 100 show where they plan on having 100 artists uh, and their work featured in their amazing gallery. So be sure to check that out uh, starting March 11th in San Francisco if you are in the area. So moving on to the sketch itself, um, when I started this normally I would have started with a series of thumbnails to see what what would work and what would look the best. Uh, in this instance, I actually had a really good idea in my head for what I wanted to see. I just needed to be able to translate it, that to the page. Um, so what I did, I needed reference for a great horned owl, which I found on Pinterest. Thank you, Pinterest. And um, I'm sort of drawing from that as I, well, as I draw from that uh, to set up the scene. Uh, you'll notice that I'm making a lot of little fiddly adjustments. Um, it's because I didn't want to exactly duplicate the owl from the image that I'm using. So uh, I'm manipulating the size, I'm manipulating the pose just a little bit, and I'm also trying to find the right scale to fit um, the owl and then the other two figures into the scene. You'll notice also that I'm changing the size of my brush quite frequently. Um, I'm using the bracket keys on the keyboard as my shortcut keys. Uh, in order to in order to do that on the fly as, I, as I'm working and I'm not trying to get into too much detail with the sketch I'm just um, blobbing in general shapes to give um, a strong read from when the image is actually shrunk down so there's a lot of good ways to start a sketch uh, like this um, and this is just one of the many ways that I use to start my sketches Uh, if anybody out there is wondering why one of his wings is deformed and shrunken down, um, it's on purpose. It's actually part of the story uh, that I mentioned earlier where there's an injured bird or an injured owl and he's being tended to. I'm getting really fiddly with the details in this area, um, mostly because I'm I want it to be perfect, but I also want <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to delay actually moving on to the other two figures, which I still have uh, rolling around in my head. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to start them. So uh, in a moment, uh, I'll start a new layer and start blocking in a little bit of the figure, immediately decide that, that it looks like garbage, and start it over again. Um, I usually don't commit my layers uh, until I know that I have something that I'm going to be very happy with, and then I'll, I'll flatten them down and work on them as a single layer. Um, but sometimes posing these figures, especially if you're making up the pose, can be a little daunting, um, and oftentimes it doesn't work the first time. So don't be afraid to mess up. Just get out there and paint a figure and paint it again and again and again.
as you can see, I am still having trouble figuring out how to put in that second character and what pose I want to go for, so I have an idea uh, while I'm noodling on the owl again that I will put in the ground, and hopefully that will help dictate um, where the character will be, uh, uh, the pose that she'll be in, and maybe give me a little bit more of a starting point than I had previously. With the secondary character in place, uh, it's time to try to block in the third character, uh, which, as you can see in a moment, does not work. There you go, that was nice. So I start again and add a little bit more care. Um, I had switched brushes for some reason and realized quickly that that wasn't going to work out as well as I'd hoped. So I'm going in with the brush that I've been using throughout this entire process so far, um, and I'm taking a little bit more care in the actual sketch itself. If you're wondering whether or not I'm using reference for this pose, uh, I'm not. I'm actually just making this up as I go. Um, However, I would point out that at some point in my career, I must have done a pose similar to this that I'm remembering or drawing from um, in order to make this look believable uh, as a pose. When I'm working on these sketches or underpaintings, I really like to keep everything uh, sort of on the same level uh, in contrast. Um, and then when, um, when I'm color picking, I'm just color picking the different shades of gray that I'm using. So there's a light gray, a dark gray, and then maybe a slightly lighter than the background uh, so that I can sculpt out details while, while working on the figure. Um, for these sketches, no, nothing is set in stone. In fact, throughout the entire painting, you'll notice that nothing is set in stone. Everything is subject to change. So while you're sketching, just keep that in mind. Everything is fluid, nothing, nothing, there isn't anything that you're working on that, that can't change if you're not happy with it. So I'm a little bit more content with the main, uh, the, the foreground figure and the owl in the background. It's time to flesh out the, um, the smaller child figure uh, on the left side of the screen. I'm making this up as I go. This is another one of those sketches uh, or another one of those, those, those poses that I'm just trying to figure it out without using reference. Um, I tried looking for reference, but it's very difficult to find the exact thing you need. And, um, some artists will actually pose and take photos of themselves, but um, 
I am a larger person, so this did not work so well for me. Uh, and in general, I find children much more difficult to draw than adult characters. With adults, you have the opportunity to to create a lot more character in, in, in body proportions and stuff. And if you're trying to draw a proportionate looking child, it becomes a lot more difficult to make it look believable. Fortunately, as this is a fantasy piece, I have a little bit more leeway. Uh, proportions don't have to be completely realistic or exact. And like I said earlier, while drawing uh, and painting, nothing is set in stone, especially in Photoshop. Uh, and I will point it out a number of times where things change, uh, oftentimes for the better. Here I'm going back into the owl and starting to render out, render out more of those forms um, and start to bring up the character of the owl so that he's not just standing there looking like, I'm a generic owl. Um, it's important, as I mentioned in other videos, that you, uh, while you're working on ca characters, while you're designing characters, um, to sort of come up with a backstory, answer, answer questions or ask yourself questions and answer them uh, as you're working on them. Uh, about your characters, where do they live, what do they eat, etc, etc, um, to help you make more informed design decisions. And now we start getting into uh, designing the background, which for me is probably one of the most difficult things to work on. Um, I love backgrounds, I love environments, but I am not as proficient in creating them as I am creating characters. Um, so I start out by um, throwing in a bunch of trees. I'm, again, I'm, I'm looking at reference while I do this. Um, and you'll notice that uh, I will start completely over. I realize that in drawing these regular looking trees in the distance I've in fact made a giant owl and two normal sized people when in fact it's a normal sized owl and two tiny people. Uh, so I will be deleting or getting rid of those layers that have those trees uh, in just a moment. Here you can see I'm using some foliage brushes, uh, grass brushes, and I'm trying to figure out how the how the forest floor is going to look 
Um, I have an idea in my head, I'm, I'm trying to see if any of these brushes, which I, I don't use on a regular basis, I'm trying to see if any of them will work for me, um, ends up that they don't. And I will go back in with the, the brush that I've been using the entire time once I, I figure out the background and um, uh, go in and just paint it all by hand. And it's, I'm okay with it, it's not frustrating because this is sort of part of the design process. It's, it's exploring and seeing what works. So don't be afraid to try things. Uh, if it doesn't work, try something new. I'd actually forgotten while I recorded this that uh, I was super confident in this background and these grasses and I'm like, this is it. Uh, that lasted maybe 12 seconds. Uh, the, the ground wasn't working so I'm trying another type of brush which I can't make work the way I want it to. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't, really, um, it doesn't really work for me so I delete the ground and I delete the color. Uh, I just started moving too quickly, too soon. Started moving to color before I should have. So now I think I've got this figured out um, with the background. I realized that they all look not as proportionate as I want them to. So I start carving out the background a little bit more, painting over the original uh, tiny trees in lieu of gigantic tree bases to give the feeling that the owl is a normal sized owl, just injured, and the two figures helping him are tiny people, namely gnomes. Here I'm trying to figure out where the light is going to be hitting the ground uh, with the gnomes and the, the owl obstructing the light source coming from behind. Um, I'm also using the tree bases in the background to lead the eye down towards the main figures, uh, namely the owl and the larger gnome. And um, yeah, I have, I'm using a lot more reference here as far as what the forest floor is going to look like, what, kind of, what, what, what leaves look like close up laying on the ground. Um, and hopefully we can make this work. So this is the end of the first little episode in this series uh, for this illustration that I am calling Healing Touch. Stay tuned for the next episode where we start to delve a little bit more into color and then uh, starting to detail out some of these little figures in here. I hope that you've had a good time and that you'll tune in for the next episode. Uh, please share, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit all the buttons uh, and be sure to come back for the next episode. And if you should have any questions regarding my process or um, anything regarding art, uh, the brushes that I use, etc., etc., feel free to send me a message. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Thanks again for tuning in, and this has been the first step.